With Jung Dae-yeon's case being opened once again, it turns out that the already sinister case was much worse and more disturbing than we originally thought. Let me tell you how her passing uncovered the dark side of the Korean film industry. Suspicious Circumstances Ever since she appeared in Boys Over Flowers, people were convinced that Jung Dae-yeon had a promising career ahead of her. Although she had only been in four projects during her career, her acting was so great that she had already cemented her place in the industry. People just knew that she would become an even bigger star in the future. But this never ended up happening as Taeyeon passed away in 2009. On March 7th, 2009, Taeyeon was found hanging in her own home. She had had a phone call with her sister a few hours earlier where she had complained about the overwhelming stress she was under and said that she wanted to hurt herself. Later, her sister tried to reach out to her once again, but when she was unable to, she returned to their shared home four hours later and found her body. It's believed that she had taken her own life around 4.30 p.m. While this first looked like a tragic case of an actress who couldn't deal with with all the hardships that come with the spotlight, it was much darker than that. Within hours of her passing, her manager at the content entertainment agency, Yu Tung Ho, claimed that he had the last note Taeyeon left, but he didn't reveal what the note actually said. While the public had thought that the note was just Taeyeon's last words to her loved ones, it turned out to be a seven-page letter that revealed the names of the 31 high-profile personnel in the industry that had forced themselves on her and had harmed her physically. The main culprit of this was the CEO of the company, Kim Sung Hoon, who, at the time, of her passing was in Japan because of the accusations that he inappropriately touched a male model. Taeyong claimed that Sung Hoon had repeatedly hurt her physically and forced her to do you know what with a bunch of powerful men in the industry, including directors, media executives, and CEOs. After her passing, the police launched an investigation on her claims and what had caused her to take her own life. Over 40 police officers were tasked to look into her case for a total of four months. A special investigative team was also additionally signed to the case. In the end, it was ruled that she took her own life as the investigators claimed that they found no evidence of foul play. The worst of it all was that none of the people Dayo named were found guilty as the court ruled that her claims lacked the evidence to jail them. Kim Sung Hoon was the only one out of the 31 people she named that was indicted for violence and defamation, but again, it was a slap on the wrist for what he did. He received only four months in prison and a year probation for hurting her physically, while Dayo's manager received a year in prison and two years of probation for defaming the CEO. But as sad as her passing was, the case was ultimately forgotten and the culprits were released in a matter of months. Well, that was until 2019. New Evidence After the Burning Sun scandal blew up, people started wondering which one of their favorite celebrities were also terrible people who had just been hiding in plain sight. Everyone is aware that the industry is full of them, but this is easy to forget because of how well idols and actors manage to look like decent people. So because of the scandal, the former South Korean president Moon Dae-in ordered a thorough reinvestigation of prominent scandals involving celebrities, whether they're new or old. This led to Jung Dae-yeon's case being reopened 10 years after her passing. So when the case reopened, Dispatch released a report with a lot of new facts about the case that weren't known to the public before. Like I said before, Jung Dae-yeon wrote a letter before her passing. According to Dispatch's report, she wrote the document in Yu jung hos office, and in it, she recorded all the instances where she was forced to do whatever Sung Hoon told her to do in order to get a role in a drama. She wrote, In October 2008, Kim Sung Hoon, CEO, sent me to the director of the drama Jung Young Go at night. He had just cast Lee Mi Suk in his drama, and I was coerced into serving liquor to him in order to be cast in his drama too. And I did it. If you are wondering what would happen if she didn't comply with the CEO, her career would be ruined forever. It gets worse because Dayeon also recalls the time she was made to do you know what with the CEO before he started hurting her physically and verbally. She said that ever since she signed a contract with the agency, she was coerced into serving liquor in order to get roles. Taeyeon also recalls a time in 2008 when Sung Hoon made Taeyeon have intercourse with him. Another time, he got too drunk, locked her in the room with him, and hit her over the head with a bottle while also hurting her verbally. She finished by saying that she's just an actress with a dream, which is making her endure horrible things from Kim Sung Hoon. The most heartbreaking part is when she says, I am just a weak and powerless rookie actress. I want to relieve myself from this pain. Along with the document, Dispatch also released screenshots from CCTV footage showing Jung Dae-yeon a few days prior to her passing. In the pictures, Dae-yeon is in front of the elevator in her manager's office on the night of February 28, 2009, where she had been for the past three and a half hours. On March 1, 2009, Jung-ho was seen bringing several documents with him that were submitted by Dae-yeon a day before to the NBC Drama Center in Ilsan. At this point, the two had already met for a few days, and Dae-yeon believed that her story would be shared with the world but without revealing her name. There were also hopes that she would be able to be released from her contract with Sung-hoon, so 
she wrote down everything that happened to her in the document. In a text conversation with her closest friend, Miss E, Taeyeon said, Yu jung oh told me to come into his office because he had something to tell me. He said he's preparing a criminal investigation on Kim jong sun He said if I wrote down everything that's happened to me, they guarantee my identity would be kept a secret and they'll also release me from my contract. So I went ahead and wrote the document. But she was disrespected even after her passing. jung oh claimed that the document that he made her write in order to be free from the company and her suffering was just her last note, which greatly discredited her claims to the police. Dispatch also conducted interviews with Dayeon's family members and friends in order to see whether they saw the document as a goodbye note or not. Based on all their statements, the words in the letter weren't actually words that Dayeon had ever used, and this doesn't seem to be like something she'd do without being told to. Her older brother said, The younger sister I know didn't know the format for these kinds of documents. She had never been to a police station before. In Dispatch's report, it was also revealed that her family didn't actually want the note to be revealed to the public, as they wanted to let the whole thing pass by quietly. They demanded that the note be burned, so imagine their surprise when they saw Dayeon's letter all over the press just a few hours later. So how did that end up happening? On March 12th, 2009, Yu jung burned the note as per the family's wishes, but what they didn't know was that he had made several copies of it so that he could later sell it to the press. On KBS 9pm's news report, they said that the burned and blackened document was found in a trash bag outside of Yu jung office. Knowing all this, how do we know who's the real villain in this case? Unexpected suspects. As much as Kim sung hoon is to blame for Jae passing, Yu jung ho and fellow actress Lee Mi Suk were definitely just as guilty. On top of all the proof they had, Dispatch also released the last text exchange between Jung Jo Yeon and Yu jung ho In the last text jung ho sent her, he told her to clear her schedule as he had set up a meeting with Jung se ho who was the same director that Lee Mi Suk had asked for in help in her fight against sung hoon Two hours after the text was sent, Jae passed away. With this, Dispatch argued that Taeyeon was used by both jung ho and Mi Suk for their battle against the Contents Entertainment and its CEO, Kim sung hoon How did Mi Suk get involved in this, though? I mentioned before that jung ho was a manager at the Contents Entertainment before leaving to create his own company in August 2008, taking Song sun mi and Lee Mi Suk with him. Taeyeon was left behind, but Mi Suk ended up getting sued by the company for breaking her contract before it expired. After they sued her, they also filed an appeal and claimed that Mi Suk had been in a relationship with a 29-year-old man in 2006 that the company had paid to hide. Keep in mind, Lee Mi Suk was named as a victim of the CEO in Taeyeon's letter, which means that both of them went through the same thing. But after Taeyeon's passing, Mi Suk was investigated by the police, and she claimed that even though the two had been under the same company, Mi Suk didn't really know her. She also said that she didn't know anything about Taeyeon's documents. But in the text that Dispatch revealed between Mi Suk and Jong se ho she says, Jong Jo Young came to me crying and asked for a favor. She came after writing a document for Yu Jung ho There's also something about how Yu and Jong Jo Young went golfing in Thailand together. This is the most sinister part of all of this. The way Taeyeon fought for Lee Mi Suk to also get justice and was thrown under the bus so another greedy person could take revenge on the company is beyond disturbing. But even with the investigation and the new facts that were revealed, the outcome didn't change at all and Taeyeon hasn't gotten justice to this day. Share your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye!